There is no question that Overwatch, not just as a game, but as a franchise, has seen limited growth in the past year. To put it bluntly, Overwatch's reputation has fallen in a tragic, dramatic fashion. The game has become the laughing stock within the shooter game genre. Competition has dwindled, content creation has stagnated, and overall satisfaction has hit record lows. Overwatch is barely talked about outside of the franchise's small community, and whenever it is mentioned by normies, it's usually for all the wrong reasons. The only people who are not completely dis satisfied with the game's current status are delusional people or, allegedly, shells. There are many hypotheses and theories as to how the franchise ended up in this predicament. This video will contend with a different but related topic. In this video, I plan on answering one overarching question. Do Blizzard's viewpoints and decisions prevent Overwatch from seeing continued success? To put it more simply, is it possible for Overwatch to recover the reputation it once held? For all the low attention span Andes of the world, I believe the answer to that question question is yes. Unfortunately, just because it's possible to save Overwatch's legacy does not mean that it is probable. It is not an unreasonable claim to assert that the hole that Overwatch is stuck in is deep. Really deep. This is a hole that has taken many years to be dug and will likely require many years to escape. One may ask Blizzard, how on earth did you guys dig this hole so damn deep? Answering that question is easy. Blizzard didn't know they were digging a hole, they didn't tell anyone that they were digging a hole, and when someone finally noticed that they were digging a hole, they hesitated and forgot to stop digging the hole until it was too late. Let's drop the hole analogy and get real for a moment. Because of Blizzard's unfocused, untransparent, and indecisive nature, the Overwatch franchise has been put in an incredibly precarious position. If Blizzard continues to follow the same path, it will be impossible for Overwatch to recover its reputation in any shape or form. Before we continue with the rest of the video, I ask you to consider supporting me by liking the video or subscribing. I put a lot of effort into creating these videos. Every small contribution you guys give me means the world to me. You don't have to, of course, but I would greatly appreciate it if you do. Anyways, we've got a lot to talk about. Thank you all so much for watching, let's dive into this video. To approach this topic with scrutiny, it would be best to attack each point one by one. Let's start with my claim that Blizzard was unfocused. What do I mean when I say unfocused? Simply put, Blizzard did not fully realize their vision for the franchise. Said another way, they had no idea what the f crap they were doing. Should Overwatch be casual or competitive? Should it be story focused or not? Should it be more like a MOBA, multi-online battle arena? Or should it be more like a traditional hero shooter? Blizzard's lack of direction was omnipresent from the very first time Overwatch as an idea was conceived. If we go way back into the development of the game, we could see that Overwatch was formed from the remnants of another previous project. That project, dubbed Titan, was supposed to be a class-based MOBA game similar to League of Legends or Dota. Due to miscalculations about the size of the game and internal shuffle of developers, Titan was ultimately scrapped in 2013, and, like a phoenix rising from the ashes, Overwatch was born. The restructuring of the Titan project into Overwatch still left many unknowns. Team 4, the Blizzard developers behind Titan and Overwatch, had decided to turn the game from a class-based MOBA to a hero shooter with MOBA-like elements. Though the game was primarily an FPS, or first-person shooter game, the gameplay would revolve around the interactions of three different roles, tank, damage, and support. It set apart the game from its company Competition, Blizzard decided to form Overwatch within a 6v6 format. In order to make the game, allegedly, viable for esports, every character was meticulously crafted and tested to be both fair and fun. While many in Team 4 wanted Overwatch to be an esports title, several members, including lead director Jeff Kaplan, wanted the game to be accessible to casual players. As a result, several characters had been designed with easy-to-understand mechanics. Other characters with higher skill floors were geared towards more experienced players, although many characters were imperfect unreleased, most characters had a well-defined niche within the game. There was a character for every player, no matter how skilled they were. Despite Blizzard's leanings towards esports, the game was not competitively sound on release. The first seasons of the game featured no role lock, but also no character limit. The game was an unkept, chaotic mess. It could be argued that this primordial state of Overwatch would have been perfect had Blizzard decided to make the game a purely casual experience. Keep this in mind for later. Eventually, Blizzard did decide to enact a character limit. Most people, including myself, saw this change as an improvement from the original state. Some people, however, saw this move as Team 4 stepping away from the original vision of the game. After character limits, there were role locks, then there were hero bans, then there was the transition of the game from 6v6 to 5v5. If we ignored a huge influence of balance on them, these decisions were made with the supposed goal of improving the competitive ecosystem. If that was true, why were so many people still mm. upset with them? It would be easy to say that Team 4 simply didn't execute. 
execute properly. While this might be true in a vacuum, I believe that this answer circumvents a more nuanced but critical question. Is this what the game is actually supposed to be? That question leads into the largest factor in Team 4's tomfoolery, the casual competitive dichotomy, or CCD. I define the CCD as the inability for a game to perfectly fulfill the desires of casual and or competitive players. In other words, you cannot make a competitive game more casual without compromising on the original vision of the game and vice versa. Does that mean it's impossible for a competitive game to satisfy casual players? No, it doesn't. What it does mean is that if you are a game developer, you have to have a solid idea of which audience you want to create your game for, and then stick with that original vision of the game for both pre- and post-release. The CCD connects with Overwatch through one simple assertion. Overwatch, in its genesis, was never supposed to be a competitive game. Over time, Blizzard remolded the game in an attempt to cater it to a competitive audience. In the end, this led to Overwatch losing its identity and thus losing its reputation among the player base. Though there are many leads which point to this concept being true, this theory is still, at its core, an assertion that has not been 100% confirmed. If we take this assertion seriously, though, Team 4's most questionable decisions can be analyzed in a new context. Blizzard's lack of focus is tied very closely to the next point, their lack of transparency. The past seven years have proved that Blizzard are abhorrent at communicating what is happening with their product. From balance patches to content drops to general design philosophy, it's important to disclose that Team 4 has made significant progress in opening up to the community. While I am pleased to give Blizzard credit where it's due, there are still a lot of things that they could and should leave open to the community. Unfortunately, Blizzard's progression may have come a little too late. Their lack of transparency when it comes to the Overwatch franchise has left a sense of distrust in all members of the community. Though there are many examples when it comes to balance that I could highlight, I would rather discuss the most glaring and destructive incident. Overwatch 2 Overwatch 1 had already been released for three years before the sequel was suddenly announced. Put special emphasis on suddenly because no one saw it coming at all. Blizzard initially marketed the game to be just an expansion to the game with an extensive story mode. There was a lot of features which Blizzard described, including skill trees and nearly infinite replayability. Most people thought that this was all the game was going to be. They were wrong. Blizzard, out of the blue, again, decided to make the core competitive game mode 5v5. Understandably, everyone freaked out when this was announced. It made no sense to anyone. Overall, people were still fixated on the story mode. If you're watching this video, there's a 99% chance that you know the fate of PvE. To those who don't know, it was scrapped. The community doesn't know exactly why the story mode failed, but it can be assumed that it was for the same reasons as Titan. The game was too big for Team 4 to handle. Moving on to the final point, Blizzard's indecisiveness. Blizzard is not good when it comes to cleaning up their mess. When they execute something poorly, which happens a lot if you couldn't already tell by now, Team 4's default response is to ignore it. If the problem becomes too big, their next response is to declare that it's actually not an issue. If pressure does continue to mount after this point, they will finally decide to do something, and then do something else that breaks the game. Blizzard's hesitative nature manifests itself mostly through balance decisions. Other competitive games have characters slash abilities slash items that have low skill floors and also have low skill ceilings. In other words, easy thing at low level is also bad thing at high level. This is how balance should work. In Overwatch, maybe because it wasn't supposed mm. to be like this originally, some low skill floor characters found incredible success at the highest level. Those characters didn't become more challenging, they just found more value at their optimized level than other harder characters. People begged Blizzard to nerf them, but Team 4 barely budged. It could be that they were using faulty data to judge whether a character was good or not. Maybe it was substandard quality testing they enacted. Perhaps they're just, well, stupid. Whatever is the case, Blizzard needed to have acted quickly in order to restore the balance. Blizzard's indecision also often morphed into stubbornness. They insist that everything is going great and that everyone who disagrees with them are just haters. They come modified the competitive scene in order to create a franchise league that would compete with what? The NFL? It was obvious to everyone that this was a terrible decision. Did Blizzard think that? <laughs> They committed to it anyways. Then it died like everyone predicted, and the esports scene became downsized dramatically. Hundreds of people lost jobs because of this decision. All of it could have been avoided if A, Blizzard didn't do this because it's stupid, or B, they waited until the scene grew naturally before codifying a franchised league. Apart from the Overwatch League, Blizzard is also stubborn when it comes to 5v5. There's been a lot of discourse surrounding whether 5v5 or 6v6 is better. If you want my two cents, 5v5 has more potential, but only if the game 
game was designed around it from the ground up. The truth is, Blizzard didn't design the game around a 5v5 framework. Therefore, transitioning the game to 5v5 without changing literally everything led to a widespread dissatisfaction with the format. More than likely, Blizzard won't make the attempt to turn the game back to where it needs to be. With that being said, why did I talk about all of this? Wasn't this video about the future of the game? All of this was stuff that happened in the past. Surely Blizzard understands that there's time to change the game for the better, right? Right? Well, I think that, unfortunately, it might be a little too late. Overwatch has little left to go on. The key thing to recognize is that all of Overwatch's degrading factors could have been prevented. If Team 4 had been more focused, more transparent, and more decisive, I wouldn't need to make a video like this. I believe that Overwatch should be a pivotal case study to all video game developers, no matter how big or small they are. Maybe, if enough developers learn from Overwatch, the whole industry of not just competitive games, but gaming as a whole could be improved. Wait, the video's not done yet! Remember when I said... I believe the answer to that question is yes. So far, I've been a pessimistic Pete about Overwatch's future. Was I not being serious when I said that recovery was possible? No, I wasn't. The only reason why I have not talked about it until now was that it's going to take a lot of restructuring from Team 4 in order to save the game's legacy. Just because it'll be hard doesn't mean it won't be possible. So, how can Team 4 save Overwatch? The first thing that they must do is sit down and define their vision for the game. Because of the CCD, we can cannot keep existing in the zone of constant compromise. Blizzard needs to clearly state whether they want the game to be a casual or competitive experience. If they choose the latter, they move on to the next step. If they choose the first option, then they can do whatever they want. I don't really care, they can go absolutely wild. Let's say they want to make Overwatch a true-blooded, no BS, full-stop competitive game. What's next? Well, the next step is to fix the balance of the game. Sounds easy, but it isn't. Every variable, whether it's characters, maps, abilities, ultimates, whatever. All of those things affect the balance to some capacity. Team 4 keeps adding new stuff into the game. Since everything interacts with everything else, new stuff complicates game balance not linearly, not exponentially, but factorially. If Blizzard truly wants to make the game balance for competition, they need to put a pause on releasing new content and reassess what's already in the game. Then, you ask the question, who gets to decide the balance? Answer. Not casuals. They don't know what they want and what's good for the game as a whole. Instead, Blizzard should consult the experts, professional players. They understand the game better than everyone else and will provide valuable feedback which can be used to improve the game. If that means reverting the game to 6v6, then do it. Okay, so now the game has improved. Great! What's next? To put it simply, expand the franchise. Comics, animated shorts, collabs, graphic novels, other video games, movies, po uh, maybe not. That. Point is, fans have been missing other aspects of the Overwatch franchise for years. People were definitely driven to play the game from the gameplay, sure, but many others were drawn in by the lore, the world building, diverse cast of quirky characters, the themes and messages, the <coughs> characters, personalities. Blizzard is sitting on a gold mine of an IP and they are not taking advantage of it at all. The final step to save Overwatch's reputation is, I believe, to open up and apologize. If anyone at Blizzard had any honest bone in their body, they would come out and say, we are sorry. When I say Blizzard, I'm specifically talking about the higher up executives and managers. They, my friends, are the ones who made all of the mistakes. Though the game devs at Team 4 cannot avoid all of the blame, the vast majority of them are just people who put their heart and soul into a game they love. Because of the executive's other incompetence, the work of those people has been tarnished. So, Blizzard executives, do you want to save Overwatch? Apologize to the community, to the professional players, and to, most importantly, the developers. It's only right. So, that's the video. Like I said, a bit more serious than normal. If you enjoyed this video and like to see more content like this in the future, please be sure to like the video and subscribe. Every single bit of support you guys give me means a lot. Thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you next time. Bye. Uh, uh, uh.